It's one thing to say that reality has this wave-particle duality nature to it, and it's a completely different thing to really understand what that means and the implications of it, because it is truly, truly, truly mind-blowing and completely counterintuitive to everything we experience in the macroscopic world. We are so used to things being either waves or particles. Particles are localized and small. I can point to them if I see a particle, a particle like a bullet, or even like a person running down a street, or an air molecule. It's there. It's, it's a particle. It's, it's right there. It has defined position. It has defined momentum. It has, it has, it's localized in space. I can hold it in my hand if I want to. And then on the complete other end of the spectrum are the waves. Waves don't have a defined position. They're spread out. I can't just point to a wave. I have to gesture broadly in order to suggest the broad location of the wave. And, and when a particle hits me, it really hits me. I feel it bouncing off of me and it, and it hits as a small little point right here. When a wave hits me, it, it, it sloshes over me and takes its time to transfer its energy and its momentum to me. Waves and particles act completely differently. Now, now there are cases when, in, in the case of like waterways where water itself is made up of countless little water molecules, uh, and then there are waves on the ocean or on the surface of a pond, but that's not really getting at the heart of wave-particle duality. The lesson, the ultimate lesson of wave-particle duality is that everything, everything has properties of both waves and particles. Sometimes the particle nature comes out more, sometimes the wave nature comes out more, sometimes it's a little bit of both, but no matter what, you can't ignore the fundamental nature of reality, which is that nature, when forced with the choice of do you want to be particles or do you want to be waves, said, I'll have a little bit of both. The wave nature of matter doesn't come out very often. When you get down to subatomic particles, the wave nature is right there. It's manifest. When we start examining protons or electrons or photons, uh, sorry, photons, I'll save that for later. Oh, if you look at the wave nature of matter, like electrons or protons, the wave nature comes out and we can't ignore it. Like, for example, inside of a hydrogen atom, we had the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom, which said that electrons had to be in certain orbitals, certain distances from an atomic nucleus. And we immediately started asking, well, why these distances? Why not any other distance? And then the wave nature of matter explains it because if the particles also have a wave nature, the wave of that electron has to fit in within that radius. It has to fit around the circumference of that orbit. In any other dif distances, the, that, that wavelength wouldn't fit. And so this is the only place where standing waves can exist. The wave nature of those particles helped explain why electrons have the orbits that they do. But up here in the macroscopic world, uh, my wave nature doesn't come out often. So we're not used to experiencing the wave nature of matter very often. And we're confronted with it when we first started digging deep into the subatomic world. But waves of what? When I say that matter has a wave nature, well, what is that wave nature? Uh, some early physicists and developers of quantum mechanics thought that, that matter really was smeared out over a volume of space. And, and, but now uh, our modern interpretation of quantum mechanics tells us that when I say an electron has a wave nature or that you have a wave nature, what is the wave of? It's a wave of probability that the wave associated with matter tells us where we can find, where we are likely to find the particle the next time we go looking for it. 
it is a wave of probabilities. Where the wave is tall and the amplitude is high, that is a likely location to find a particle. Where the wave is small or at a trough, that is a place where we are unlikely to find a particle the next time we go looking at it. The wave particle duality says that particles exist, but the waves tell us where we might find them. That is the wave nature of these particles. This interpretation was first given to us, uh, were first realized by Max Born when he was playing with Schrodinger's equation, playing with the wave nature of matter, and he was looking at scattering experiments where you take an electron, you shoot it on a screen, and see how the electron deflects off the screen. And using the wave nature of electrons, he was able to get an accurate prediction of what would happen to the electrons. But at the end of the day, only one electron strikes your detector at the end of the line. There's a little dot where the electron hits. So how do you reconcile using the wave nature of the electron with only one electron showing up? And that's by interpreting the wave as a wave of probability of telling you where you will find the electron the next time you go looking for it. The other side of this coin of the wave-particle duality is that things we might naturally assume are waves are actually made of particles, like light. Now, the debate about whether light as a particle nature or wave nature had been raging for centuries. Up until the development of quantum mechanics, it was leaning more in the wave direction that light is waves of electricity and magnetism. But it was Einstein's work to show that light itself is quantized. Light itself has a particle component. These particles we call photons, and that the particles are the fundamental unit, the, the smallest, dimmest, briefest flash of light that you can possibly have is one single photon. That is the particle nature of the wave that we call electricity and magnetism. And so, Wave-particle duality is, is at the heart of quantum mechanics. It's one of the slipperiest concepts out there. It's very hard, even for me, honestly, even for me to fully wrap my hand around the concept of wave-particle duality, that even I have a wave nature, but this wave is a wave of probabilities that tells me if someone were to observe me, the, the likely spot where they would find me. Like, that's so weird and mind-blowing, but it's one of the many weird and wonderful mind-blowing things about quantum mechanics. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe, and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to see how you can keep supporting this show. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.